Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com, and welcome back to our build series on our 2006 Kawasaki KLX 110. Now today, we're gonna to be focused in on replacing the chain and sprockets. Now, as you can see, we've already been very busy with several other projects on this particular machine. We've already done the rims and spokes, we've already done a top end build, and what you can't see is we've already been into both the front and rear suspension. But today, it's all about the chain and sprockets, so let's dive into it. So here's everything we're gonna be playing with today. As you would expect, new chains and new sprockets. Now the chains originally, I was gonna go with this RK unit, but then I came up on this Renthal, and I think I'm gonna go with it instead. It's just a little bit more robust, and I think that's gonna serve this unit well. Now as far as the sprockets, I went with a Sunstar on the back and a Renthal up front. Now you will note that I changed the gearing just a little bit, and I know I'm gonna lose a little bit of its torque coming out of the corner, but I think it's more important for this to be a momentum bike where it can carry more speed down the straight. So we went up to a 15 tooth on the front to accomplish that. And also while we're in there, well there's several wear items, well that looked a little rough, especially these cushions. I've already had the tire off a couple of times when we did the, uh, the wheel and spokes and they're hard as a brick. And it's only a matter of time before they break down all the way and fail. Now the other wear item I want to replace is this swing arm guide, it, it was pretty much eaten through. You'll see here in a few minutes. Now the chain adjusters, they were looking a little bit rough as well. So we're gonna go ahead and replace those. Now the other piece is this chain guide from BBR. Really nice unit. It helps keep that chain in line when it starts to wear and may start to wander <laughs> one side or the other. All right guys, that's all the parts that we're gonna use. Let's start off by getting that brake arm disconnected. Then we can lift it up and remove that rear tire. Like I said, I've already had this tire off like three or four times. So I've learned a couple of tricks because it is nearly impossible to remove this brake arm without pushing this down. And if you get a lift under here, it's pushing up against the bottom of it, it won't let you. So we're gonna get that disconnected first. Find our master. There it is. All right, let's see if we can get her pushed off of there. Done. Next, let's remove this front cover. at it, take off this upper cover. Our old chain guide. While we're at it, the swing arm protector. Now let's go ahead and get that axle out. These are those cushions I was talking about, and they are hard as a brick. So that will be why we're replacing them. Because once they break down, the cushion goes away, and then guess what? You've stripped out your hub because you will break all these apart. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> that right there would rip it apart. Well, let's start with the front, and it's just held in by a circlip. So we're going to reach in there, release it, and pop on the new one. That is leaking a little bit. We'll keep an eye on that. We're going from that 14 up to a 15. Now here's your difference, plus this Brenthal unit. It's just made out of superior materials, and you'll also notice these little concaves right here and that's there, so when you pick up dirt, mud, whatever, that gives it a place to go and get it forced out away from the chain. 
The other thing you want to realize by making just a one tooth difference up front, that is a major change uh, when it comes to a, a gear ratio. That's equivalent to probably going three or four on the rear sprocket. So we will be playing around with a little over a two to one ratio by going with this particular setup. All right guys, when you're putting your circlet back on, when it was manufactured, it went through a punch process and that means it's gonna have a sharp edge on one side and kind of a rounded on the other. And we want the sharp edge facing out to where it grabs into that groove. So you just need to feel it and see which side is just a little bit more aggressive. And after that, and then you can just slide her up and over and pop it in that groove. There we go. Next, let's get that rear sprocket and those are just 14 millimeters. Let our tire help us a little bit. We'll use these cushions one more time. Oof. Hmm, some string. Must have run into something at the track. And make sure you've got your studs rotated back in the right direction because they fell back. Let's get these bottomed out and then we'll get them torqued. The magic number here is going to be 32 foot-pounds. I guarantee you the ones that I took off, they weren't torqued. Now, let's go ahead and get our new cushions installed. Yeah, you can see this one was starting to break down. All right, don't forget this spacer on the inside. A lot tighter. Definitely worth the effort on those. Now while we're at it, let's go ahead and replace that swing arm protector. Now this unit from BBR is used on several different models and it comes with a spacer, I would assume, for maybe a TTR or either a CRF. But for this application, we won't need it. But they do recommend that we use Loctite on these new bolts, and that's what we're going to do. They even send their own Loctite, so we'll even use theirs. Why not? Love the look of high-quality parts. And you could tell that these had a few miles on them. Okay, let's at least get the new bolts on our new adjusters. Don't forget your washer. Go ahead and get a little grease on our axle just to make it easier to take out next time. Okay, let's see if we can get that to glide back in there. All right, then we got one more spacer to do on the other side. It's tight now with those new cushions. Really tight. There we go. Now we want to get our brake linkage back together. Just leave all that loose for the time being. The drum arm. There. Now we want to bring this all the way up to its first mark. This one can't even get to the first mark because it hits the weld on the swing arm. And I do want to go all the way up there, so I'm going to take off that edge just to get that last sixteenth of an inch. And we're just temporarily tightening this down just to hold everything in place. All right. So 44 lengths, counting the master. So actually, chain length would be 88. But remember that we're going with a little bit larger sprocket in the front, so we might not be able to cut the other chain the same length as this one might not reach because we're, we have a larger sprocket up front. Let's let the machine tell us what it wants, then we'll count it out and see if indeed it was the same as the old one. 
All I'm doing now, guys, is just feeding the chain through. Then I'm just kind of got a zip tied in place. Make sure I'm comfortable with the, the links. Mark it, and then we're gonna count it just for fun. Let's see where we ended up. So, we are gonna be cutting right there. Yeah, <laughs> so we're taking out like, I don't know, 20 links somewhere in there. <laughs> Let's see what we had. So that's 42 times two would be 84, 85, 86. Counting the master is what we're gonna end up with. All right guys, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Of course, I've got a chain maker and breaker and we could do that, but it takes forever. And this is more fun actually, just to get a side grinder, grind off those two uh, rivet heads and then pop it out. And that's what we're gonna do. Now normally, if you've got an O-ring chain, I don't recommend this way because you run the risk of overheating the actual rubber O-ring seals that are inside. This chain is not an O-ring chain, so I'm, I have no reservations about just cutting this one with a side grinder. There we go. Done. Okay, let's get her in place now. Get our master link through. So much easier without the O-rings. But on this little machine, an O-ring chain would just sap its power to death. There's a stamp, a small stamp on the plate. You want that facing out. It's almost impossible to see, but it's there. All right, and of course you want the link with the closed edge facing forward. That way it won't get knocked off. There we go. Okay, let's get our slack set and then get that axle torqued. I've got it a little on the tight side, but let's be honest, we don't have a lot of suspension travel on this unit. And this chain is gonna stretch a lot when you first start it up. Once it goes through that first stretch cycle and gets uh, settled in, then you'll come back and you want it a little bit looser than I've got right now. I think the manual shows like 15 millimeters of play, somewhere in that neighborhood. We're probably a little under that right now, just eyeballing it, but this will be a good starting point for it to break in. All right, guys, we're gonna take the axle nut to 47 foot pounds. All right, we pretty much did this with our fingers, but what you wanna do after you tighten this up, let's go ahead and put a little bit of tension on that one and then bring in your lock. There we go. Let's get the adjuster tightened on the other side as well. Now you'll notice that we have an open place to get in our cotter pin. Now had we not, you'd wanna rotate it just to the nearest position where you could get the cotter pin in. Never back off. Now we can replace our front sprocket slash chain cover. Well, all right guys, that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video. Although I do need to adjust the brakes, but we're actually gonna do a video showing you how to do the complete installation. So if you would check out this unit's playlist and I can walk you through that process. Well, listen, if you wanna keep up with the next video that we do on this, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. That way you'll know when we drop the next one. And as far as any questions, why don't you leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. We just wanna say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.